So Chuck Schumer has announced Democrats plan to pass a bill that will provide monthly payments to families and social security beneficiaries. So a $200 monthly benefit boost could go out to millions of senior citizens and families with children very soon, once lawmakers approve this new bill. Now shattering previous records, the average price of a gallon of gasoline hit $5.80 in California last week. The price is actually up more than $2 from the $3.76 that consumers saw this time last year. And I know many of you are wondering what this bill includes. Well, everybody, Governor, Governor Gavin Newsom told reporters this week the package is also focused on reporting and protecting people from volatile gas prices and advancing clean transportation, providing three months of free public transportation. Fast-tracking electric vehicle incentives and charging stations and new funding for local biking and walking projects. The majority of the $11 billion relief package, around $9 billion, has been allocated for the sending of a $400 direct cash payment for each vehicle a household owns. There is a two-vehicle limit, and residents should be aware that the bill caps the number of times this benefit can be claimed at two. Each year, drivers in California spend about $300 in state excise taxes for gas and diesel, and the direct payment aims to offset the cost. The bill allocates funding to pause the inflationary adjustment to gas and diesel tax rates, and these rates are tied to the price. If the rate sits at 5% and prices increase, then the cost for consumers is larger, and this is what the state is trying to avoid. To avoid the exclusion of seniors who receive Social Security, SSDI, and low income, Newsom's proposal would send the rebate to all who have a vehicle registered with the California Department of Motor Vehicles. To encourage ridership of public transit systems, the bill also includes $750 million in incentive grants to transit and rail agencies to provide free transit for Californians for three months. Each day in the state, millions use public transit systems, and by making these systems free, the Governor, the governor Gavin Newsom hopes that this will make and encourage riders to continue using a bus, train, or light rail. So with the arrival of a new month comes a new payment for each and everybody in the Social Security program. Each month, the Social Security Administration issues millions of payments to beneficiaries of the program, including retired Americans and SI recipients. The SSA increases monthly SI payments to match inflation to avoid the negative impact on beneficiaries when inflation rates are high. The equalization process is known as the cost of living adjustment. In 2022, the COLA increase was 5.9%, which translates into average monthly payments of around $1,700 for individuals and up to $2,700 for couples. I want to thank all the folks working so hard here in Washington Hilton to make this conference possible. Thank you all very much. <laughs> and you want to know how seriously I take the role you play on the front lines in this country just look at who I asked to come with you. You said you wanted to know what's going on. I sent you the whole damn administration. <laughs> the cost of living adjustment climbed to 5.9% beginning this year, impacting 64 million claimants. Last month, an extra 200 bucks was made available for SSI claimants that received at least $3,300 per month in 2021. The maximum benefit for someone who retired age 70 in 2021 was around $3,895. But if you're retired at age 70 in 2022, your maximum benefit could be around $4,194. Social security benefits depend on the recipient's age of retirement. And the earliest a retiree can claim their social security benefits is at age 62. However, with inflation rates rising and Medicare premiums jumping in, benefits should definitely be increased even more. And according to the SSA, the maximum amount of earnings subject to social security tax is also set to increase. Folks, you may qualify for a stimulus payment worth up to $1,261. President Biden, Joe, Joe Biden, President Biden's wife, said during her speech today that the Biden administration's priority of providing two years of tuition-free college won't be wrapped into any spending bill that the Democrats are trying to pass. The First Lady said in remarks that one year ago I told this that Joe Biden was going to fight for community colleges, but Joe has also had to make compromises. Congress hasn't passed the Build Back Better Act yet, the Build Back Better agenda yet. Now, Joe Biden told progressive lawmakers on Capitol Hill last year that the free community college provisions were expected to be dropped from the Build Back Better package. A few days later, Biden promised that he would make and try to make community college free and make this into a reality during his first term in office. Biden said he's going to try to get it done. In his American Families Plan, Biden initially proposed that Congress appropriate, appropriate $109 billion for two years of free community college so that every student has the ability to obtain a degree or certificate. A White House release said this. The plan would also include the so-called dreamers who have been brought to the United States by their migrant parents. Now, as for the Build Back Better legislation, negotiations among Democrats were stalled late last year after Joe Manchin publicly declared his opposition to the bill. 
now a new cost of living adjustment may give a payment boost to Americans and their, and their SSI and other Social Security benefits. The cost of living adjustment, or COLA, comes from measurement comes from a measurement of consumer inflation. Companies to drive prices and higher and higher. So it's not just the reality of income and wealth inequality, corporate profits. It is an economy in which a handful of giant corporations control sector after sector after sector and can control the pricing that goes on. In terms of agriculture, just four firms in America control 85% of the corn seed market, 82% of the beef packing market, 76% of the soybean seed market, 66% of the pork processing market, and 54% of the poultry processing market. All right, that's agriculture, that's food. In terms of transportation, four large companies control 67% of our airlines and 83% of our railways, while just three companies control 80% of cargo shipping. In terms of health care, over the past 20 years, there's been approximately 1,600 hospital mergers, while 90% of metropolitan hospital markets are considered highly concentrated. And maybe most important, and we had a hearing on this, and we're going to come back to this issue over and over again, in terms of our entire economy, and I want everybody to hear this, we should all understand that just three Wall Street firms, three, one, two, three, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard control $22 trillion in assets, which is roughly the equivalent of the entire gross domestic product of the United States of America. Three companies. And when you have that kind of power, you are impacting hundreds and hundreds of corporations where you have your major stockholder and the lives of millions and millions of workers. If we are serious about combating inflation and lowering prices, we must aggressively use the antitrust laws that are on the books and introduce new ones as necessary to break up behemoth corporations and increase competition. Now, is corporate greed the only reason for inflation? The answer is obviously not. The severe supply chain crisis and the microchip shortage are also contributing to higher consumer prices. But let me remind my colleagues that over the last 30 years, as a result of our disastrous, unfettered free trade policies, corporate America has shut down many thousands of factories and shipped millions of good-paying American jobs to low-wage countries. Maybe, just maybe, 